Hi everyone, it's Nicola Dorier. Um, so I'm making a small uh, screencast to explain you what I was I was working on recently. As some of you know, uh, BitPay seems to uh, not support Bitcoin anymore and support B2X. So it lets me wonder. Uh, so personally, it was a problem as I advise lots of customers to use BitPay for their own services, and this customer does, don't want uh, don't want a B2X and want to stay on Bitcoin. Uh, so I need to find a way to not make them redevelop anything they have already done while still being able to continue uh, making business on Bitcoin. Uh, so I decided to open source um, and create this project that is called BTC Pay Server. Uh, so as I said, the goal is really to allow you to migrate uh, from BitPay to BTC Pay without the need of redeveloping anything. Uh, so I'm, I tried to reproduce their API faithfully. So of course, um, I, am, I, I will be very happy if you can try it and, and, uh, and, and give me the, some feedback about that uh, because they might have some corner case I didn't, I didn't uh, try it. Uh, so so, uh, so if this is an open source server. Uh, so basically what I'm showing it to you, uh, showing you here, you can fork it and host it on your own. Uh, on my side, I will not try to make a business out of it. I just try that I want p other people to use it and make business with it. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Uh, so first, there is a uh, GitHub page uh, where you can follow some of the stuff uh, I dec documented. Uh, so here I show you BTC Pay, the server testnet Azure website. It's a, a free instance of BTC Pay server running on testnets uh, that you can use for your internal testing. And I can I use myself for my testing. So like if it's broken, don't uh, don't don't panic. You know it's a, it's a, it's it's a way for me to test easily. Uh, if you want to join a bit, uh, you can go on the Slack. So there's kind of lots of people going there and I will directly help you to uh, debug if there is any bugs in my code or support new use case. Uh, you can also go on the GitHub link that is here. Uh, there is a donation address, so these two some of my time. Uh, the design is also made by my girlfriend. Uh, so if I can, can treat her some sushi, I will be very happy to. <laughs> so uh, let's get started. So imagine that my goal is as a merchant to replace uh, BitPay by BTC Pay. So basically you will register a new account. So the account doesn't really matter. Okay, so this is created. So in VTC Pay Server, uh, once you have a, a user, you need to create a store. So one user can manage multiple stores, and then when you create an invoice, basically it goes to one of these stores. So this is different from BitPay, where BitPay like one account equals one store. So I will just create my Awesome store. Okay. So once I created it, I go to settings. And so you can see one important information in my store is that I can specify what we call a derivation scheme. So the derivation scheme is basically where the money goes when you get paid. Okay. So the way to 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 know that uh, in Beacon World is to use a export key and I support several kind of export keys so if you are you have a multi-sig you can use that but right now I don't think there is any wallet supporting it 
so I will say I created a wallet on uh, Electrum, okay? And so in wallets, master pubkey, you can have this pubkey here. So if you are using Ledger or Trezor, you get access to this master pubkey. So you can reuse that and just follow what I'm doing. So I copy that. So once you are copied, you can very verify. So you, you see that there is several address, address type, right? Uh, uh, in the case of Electrum, it's, it's XPUB legacy. Uh, if you do XPUB, it's using new batch 32 addresses that are not really widely supported. If you are using, for example, a ledger or uh, yeah, if you are using ledger, it's also X, this one. If you are using ledger segwit, you will need this one. So in my case, I need this one here, legacy. So, okay. I can check. So if you click on check, you see it generates the addresses that you know about. So you can see that uh, the address my wallet is proposing is MWDD2D something. Okay, so you have to verify if it's not in the page. So it is in the page. So right, I, I, right here, I put my the right derivation scheme. So I save that. Okay, so when you are created your store, you can just start creating invoice to the UI. So right here, there is an invoice. So for 150 USD, uh, I don't support yet multiple currency. It will come soon. Uh, so I create the invoice. So now uh, you can just click on checkout to proceed to the checkout page. So as you see, you can you, the buyer will be able to put his own mail address if he wants a refund. And I will just pay to this address directly. So, uh, so imagine I'm the buyer, I need, I want to pay this invoice. Not replaceable. <laughs> It's broadcasting now to show up soon here. Okay, so my invoice got just got paid. Uh, so imagine that you want to see what's going on. So you can see all your invoice here. Okay, you have a, a, a way of searching every information of your invoice in this area. So like imagine that the customer give you a invoice ID, you can just search by invoice ID. Um, you can see the detail. So like in the detail of the invoice, you can see interesting stuff, like for example, the deposit address for the for this invoice. Uh, so as we can see, this is this invoice has been confirmed. Uh, so confirmed is mean uh, that uh, it's not confirmed in the blockchain, but it means that the payment is considered clear by the merchant. So the merchant will ship uh, the product. You can configure that in the settings of your store if you want. More, uh, more, more, more strict policies. Uh, so yeah, you can see that the transaction has been sent. I don't know if she appear. It appear again here on test on a uh, smart bit. Sometimes smart bit take a, a white show it. I don't really know why. Uh, yes, actually it's showing. So it's showing here. So my. I, the transaction is is in the blockchain, no problem with it. Uh, then, so this all works well if you want to do a invoice manually, uh, but most likely you are doing it programmatically for your own project. So in this case, then you need to go in your store settings, settings, access token, oh. For those of you who are familiar with the BitPay API, uh, this is secured by 
a signature of your HTTP request to the API. Uh, so you have to create what you call a token uh, that represents your rights. So the token asks you for the public key that you will use to authenticate yourself. And that's about it. So like, let's create an access token. Uh, so, uh, API, I would say. So they, they two way they several initiated what, what uh, BitPay called several initiated pay pairing or client initiated pairing. Right now I will do a client initiated pairing because I already know my public key. Um, so my pop key, I, I generated one just before. So is this one request pair, pairing? Okay, so this pop key, this uh, this represents a pop key. This pop key is uh, asking me permission about uh, to access this store. So I say okay. So now. Uh, if I post uh, if I if I have the private key of uh, this public key, then I can start using the BitPay API to connect to it. So I will show a quick example. Yeah, not not very hard. Uh, do I have a project nearby I can use for that? I can hijack it. Yeah, okay, we'll do it here. Okay, so. For example, here I'm I'm using a uh, the BitPay client in C Sharp to access my service. Um, so you can use that, or you can use whatever API they developed. So uh, I tested on Ruby thanks to uh, thanks to Max from the Digila team. Uh, it works fine. I tested also with the with the C Sharp. API of BitPay, it works, uh, the C Sharp client library, it works fine. So you can, there is also a PHP library, so do as you want. So in my case, I have my private key, that is this one. Uh, so encoders.x.code. Okay. So then I can create the BitPay client, so new BitPay. Uh, so it has my key and the environment. So my environment is this address. So if you are using BitPay, here you replace with the BitPay address. Okay, it's the only change that you have to do. And here I can start messing around so like uh, invoice create invoice so I can create a new invoice I'm not exactly sure exactly what are the, the the needed fields so I will just copy paste another thing I was doing here No worries, I, I, I said that it's only supporting USD, but actually I think you can use other currencies. It will still work, but not in the UI, it doesn't show it. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I take, I, I create a new invoice, for example, of 15 USD of, uh, I don't know, awesome stuff. So whatever, whatever, whatever you are doing. So if I run this code, ideally what we will see is that we have create, just created an invoice uh, in my store. Okay, so now it passed here. Okay, so it seems to have worked. Let's see how it goes. Uh, so now I need to go in. I, I need to go in new invoice. 
so here you can see my new my new invoice here that has been properly done okay so that's about all I wanted to show you for now um, so if you want to host it by yourself or play with it actually I have I, I will probably make another podcast to show you but I make quite substantial documentation about it so if you know how docker works I created a docker compose file so you can easily bootstrap it with one command line uh, and play with it if you want to develop on it uh, I, you also have to run a docker compose that is in the test project here but I think I will I will make a separate uh, video for that so thanks for listen, listening and uh, I hope it, you, you will like it and I hope you will come on the slack and try to use it for and try to migrate and re reuse it to report me some some bugs that you might found so I, I, I plan to release it for production before uh, the hard fork and uh, yeah I'm, I'm waiting for your feedback thanks you